First of all, I know this video has been a long time coming. I apologize. Not gonna come up with an excuse. <laughs> Just sorry. Yeah. Sup peeps, it is Jackson here. Welcome to today's video. Today uh, is a video that I've been meaning to get done for a while. Um, <laughs> this is my 2022 favorites video. So every year I go through, I talk about my favorite music, movies, TV shows, games, all that good stuff. Just celebrating the entertainment that we got throughout the year. And I haven't done 2022s yet. And it is the 17th of January, 2023. Um, <laughs> apologize for that. Um, I've been very caught up. We've gotten back into the swing of rehearsals and I'm gonna be starting another show in like two weeks. So I've been getting everything sorted. Work has been chaotic. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna go category by category. We'll start with games, then we'll go into movies, TV shows, and music to end off. And obviously like my most anticipated things, some of the other things outside of entertainment that I really enjoyed this year. And of course, let me know what you guys enjoyed um, in the comments down below. And before we get started, I also just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you to you guys. We are at over 900 subscribers now, which is insane to me that you guys actually like what I put out. Just wanted to say thank you for everything that you guys have done for me. Um, and just sticking around to watch all this insane content. I don't even know if I can call this content, but here we are. Just thank you. Thank you for tuning in, and um, I will hope to have more for you guys very, very soon. I'm really appreciative. Thank you, guys. I'm fixing this up. This is bothering me. So, we'll start off with games. These first two are Switch games, uh, and they are super fun family games. Um, so we're talking about Mario Party Superstars first, which is super cool. It's a basically a remake of a bunch of the old Mario Party boards with like the Super Mario Party for Switch graphics. And it's been super fun. My friends and I have played a ton of this whenever we've gotten together this year. I thought it was really well done. And also Nintendo Switch Sports. We've been begging, I have been personally begging for a Wii Sports for Switch game for years, like since the Switch came out. And uh, we finally got it, and it's fantastic. I've been playing a ton of it, especially very recently. Um, it's super fun. Also, Fall Guys was free to play this year, which was super fun. I've been playing a ton of it. Emma has been playing with me, um, and I've been playing with Mary Rose and Ethan and DJ. Emma and I recorded a video of us playing together of a um, Zoom, so I will have that. It's in editing, so I will have that to you guys very soon. It's super fun. This next game is one that I mentioned in last year's favorites video, which is Deathloop. Last year, I was only two hours into it, and I had I've been in the middle of playing it for a playthrough. That playthrough no longer is happening because I finished the game on my own and I apologize for that, but I just did not have time last year. I had so much going on, but I can tell you I finished the game and it's fantastic. The graphics are incredible. It runs super quick. The mechanics are amazing. The puzzle solving along with first person shooting mechanics, which first person shooters are usually not my thing. I loved this. And then the voice acting is incredible. The story I felt had a little bit to be desired, but that whole obstacle of trying to solve and figure out the perfect loop, like more than made up for that. Like that's right up my alley and I absolutely loved it. Next, I wanna talk about The Last of Us Part One, which is right here. I'm in the middle of playing at the moment because I wanted to replay The Last of Us Part 2 because I haven't played that since my first playthrough on the channel actually. I have not played it since it came out and I wanted to replay the first one and then Part 1 came out which is the PS5 remake and holy shit you guys. I know there's been a lot of debate about the price point and whatever and that maybe it didn't deserve a remake but I tell you this remake is fantastic. It runs so quickly, 60 frames per second, the haptic feedback, everything has been rebuilt entirely from the ground up. That first opening cutscene, which is in-engine by the way, not just a pre-rendered video, I gasped. I fully thought it was live action for a hot second. The remake is fantastic. It basically elevates the old game to the standard that Last of Us Part 2 set, and I absolutely love it. I cannot wait to play more of this thing. I'm up to the winter section already. If you haven't played the game before, I highly recommend getting part one if you have a PS5. It's fantastic. Last game I want to talk about was the big one of last year. 
God of War Ragnarok. I finished playing it re very recently and um, holy shit, it's one of the best games I've ever played. You guys know how much I loved the 2018 God of War that I played back in 2019. We've been waiting for this for a long time and it was well worth the wait. Every story beat had me hooked. The acting, the graphics, the story just pulled me all the way through. I was in shock. Like, I was spam texting my friend Will, who had finished the game before me, my thoughts as I went the whole way through. And I sobbed by the end. I'm not going to give away any spoilers, except for the fact that if you played the 2018 God of War and you haven't played this yet, do it. It's on PS5 and PS4. It's fantastic. Game of the year right there for me. Also, while we're talking video games, I replayed 2018 God of War before I played Ragnarok, and um, I got a new purchase this year, which is like my favorite thing I have bought this year. This is the Backbone 1 PlayStation Edition for iOS devices. It basically becomes a handheld console for my phone, so I can play my PS5 games through the Remote Play app anywhere. Like, I was at work every day for like a solid week, and then I went and did stuff afterwards and while I was waiting for friends and I had two hours to kill I would just get my phone out and load up God of War while I was replaying it and play it on this. It's amazing. Best purchase of the year for me was this. Worth every cent. I love it. Literally my only nitpick with it is that there's no button on here for the touchpad on the controllers right here which a lot of the games that I play rely on that touchpad as a separate button, like, especially The Last of Us Part 1. I have to press that touchpad to go into crafting and stuff like that. There's no dedicated button on that for this. You have to use the touch screen on the remote player, which sort of takes me out a little bit because it also takes forever to respond. So that's the only thing I'd like to see improved, but other than that, fantastic piece of hardware right there. So that's games. Now we're gonna get going on to TV shows. I'm trying to make it nice and quick this year because I know these videos tend to go on for a while. You'll be disappointed to know that I only watched one Marvel series this year and it was Hawkeye, the one from the previous year that I hadn't watched yet. But I very much enjoyed it. Haley Steinfeld and Florence Pugh absolutely stole the show for me. But I very much enjoyed it. Hawkeye has always been one of my personal favorites. He's very underrated, very underappreciated in my opinion. And the way that his story plays out in this was amazing. I loved it. I also started watching Bluey this year, which I know, weird, right? But like, Emma got me to watch like an episode or three and um, it is the purest show on television. Like it's so cute. I'm so glad that there's a show like this that exists for the youngest generation of kids that we have now. It's amazing and so Australian and it's set in Brisbane, which is awesome. I am in love with it. I can't wait to watch more. <laughs> this year I also watched Euphoria for the very first time, seasons one and two. Now season two came out this year, but I hadn't seen season one before just because I knew there was topics that were discussed in the show and shown in the show that were very triggering for me. Um, based on personal experience. But I watched it with my friends Emma and Will, the out date potatoes, and Emma actually made like a spreadsheet for, of like timestamps and like triggering things that could affect us in each episode, which was an amazing way to watch it with them. So I'm really grateful to Emma for that. And I really enjoyed it. There are bits and pieces of storylines that I find very questionable, but I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes next. I very much enjoy it. It's very stylized. Like it truly has its own, its own identity and I absolutely love it. I also watched Steven Universe for the first time this year, which I I had only seen like in reruns like every so often, but I had never watched all of it in one go in context. And holy crap, it's one of the best animated series ever made. It's fantastic. Once again, my friend Will had watched it before me and I was texting him my thoughts. And then we watched Steven Universe Future together when I got to that part. Holy crap, that series gave me an existential crisis. But it's so pure and lighthearted and joyful while still discussing some really important topics and has amazing LGBTQ plus representation. I loved it. I loved it. It's adorable. One of my favorite shows ever. It's great. Speaking of animated series, Harley Quinn season three came out. I was a massive fan of Harley Quinn season one and two. It's one of the best adult animated series out there at the moment and season three only elevated that. We got to see more of Harley and Ivy's couple dynamics. If you haven't watched the first two seasons, watch them. I highly recommend them. I believe it's on Binge in Australia now. So go watch it. It's a fantastic show. We also got the Umbrella Academy season three, which I really liked, but it was still kind of a step down from season two for me, which is already stepped down from season one. But like, I'm still enjoying all of these characters, except Allison. I don't like what she's becoming. I'm super excited to see where the final season leads us and what all happens next. I, I love this show, so I'm pumped. I really enjoyed season three. Also, a new Netflix series came out this year called Heartbreak High. The way I have been describing this to people who haven't watched it is, imagine Euphoria meets sex education, but it's set in Australia. I really loved it. I wasn't planning on watching 
this. And then I sat down with Scarlett one time when she was watching it, and then we just started binging the whole thing in one night. And it's fantastic. It is similar to Euphoria in the sense that it does discuss some triggering topics, but it's also very topical to Australian culture as well. Like they deal with not only racism to people of color, but especially to indigenous Australians as well, and Torres Strait Islander peoples, which isn't talked about a lot in Australian media at all, so I really applaud them for that. There's amazing disabled representation, LGBTQ plus representation, and it's dramatic as hell. I really enjoyed it. It's been confirmed for season two as well, so I'm excited for that. We also got Rick and Morty season six, which I think this is the best season we've had in a while, and I'm the kind of person who enjoyed how wacky season four and five got when other people didn't. This seemed to unify everyone again and be like, okay, yeah, this is great. I really enjoyed this season, and I know it's been confirmed for a bunch of other seasons. Can't wait to watch more. Emma and I watch it on a weekly basis when it comes out, so I'm pumped for more. Also, Stranger Things season four. Holy shit. We have season five coming out in the next couple of years. Wow. Like, I love Stranger Things so much. It's one of my favorite shows ever made. Season four elevated it to a whole new level. Like, one of the most, if not the most, cinematic shows ever made. And that whole two-part finale, my friends and I got together and watched it on release night. It was that big. So if you haven't seen any Stranger Things, catch the hell up. You got a few years before season five, and season four is just spectacular. Next show I want to talk about is Severance. This is an Apple TV Plus exclusive series. Season one is only out now, it's been confirmed for season two. I watched this during the very last week of 2022 because I wanted to get it in before the year ended and it's one that I've always been intrigued by and I can tell you now it's fantastic. Like you guys know I'm a sucker for like murder mysteries or just mysteries in general. Things that need solving, questions that need to be answered, little clues being revealed now and then. It was ripping the whole way through. I absolutely loved it. I know you can get a one week free trial on Apple TV Plus. I highly recommend getting it and then, I don't know, subscribing. I wanna watch a lot of the other stuff that's on there but Severance is a really good show. So if you start somewhere, anywhere on Apple TV Plus, I can't recommend that enough. It's fantastic. And lastly, Heartstopper. As a major fan of the books for years, this series was everything to me. I watched it like a full 26 times in its first two weeks, mostly because I was becoming very depressed again and at the time it was my only source of serotonin. But it was fantastic. It's amazing, pure representation. It's witty, it's funny, it's adorable, it's devastating. And someone who knows the books, I'm scared for how they're going to tackle everything else that's to come in the books in the show. But season two is coming this year. I'm I'm so hyped. I can't get over how well done it was and I'm so happy. Thank you Netflix for getting it right. <laughs> now we're gonna move on to movies. First up in the year, literally on New Year's Day, I watched Encanto, which is a fantastic movie musical. I have issues with the story, mainly a whaler. Fuck a whaler. If you disagree with me on that, fight me. But it's great. Loved it. Tick tick boom. Fantastic movie on Netflix. Andrew Garfield did not have the right to go off like that. Holy crap. It was an amazing adaptation. Lin-Manuel Miranda did such a good job directing. It's amazing. Loved it. Next we're gonna get all the Marvel out of the way. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I liked it, kinda meh, but I liked it. I'm intrigued to see where it goes next. Thor Love and Thunder. This opinion has gotten me in trouble with some of my friends. I like it better than Ragnarok. And I wasn't even the biggest fan of Ragnarok to begin with. It was too much of a 180 from the serious tone of the previous four films. And I completely get why, and it worked for the better. It was jarring for me. I did not like it at first. It took some time for me to come around to that one. But Thor Love and Thunder, I feel like, balanced both of those sides of the Thor films very, very well. And Christian Bale played the hell out of Gore the God Butcher, a fantastic choice of villain, by the way. And actually gave Thor some really good character development that wasn't just treating him as a joke, which is what I felt Ragnarok sort of became. Very happy with that one. And also Black Panther Wakanda Forever, a fantastic film. Angela Bassett absolutely deserved that win for Best Actress. It was still devastating to watch it in the context of knowing that Chadwick Boseman's gone, but they couldn't have done it any other way, I don't think, in honoring him and his legacy as the Black Panther. Really, really enjoyed it. I, it was powerful, is the word I would use to describe that movie. Next, let's talk 
old animated films. So I saw Turning Red at the beginning of the year, which is a travesty. It should have been on in cinemas. It's that good. It's fantastic. It's one of my favorite movies. I absolutely loved it. Lightyear, which is also fantastic. Seeing that origin story of Buzz Lightyear, like the actual character, not just the toy. And also Strange World, which is amazing representation. And I'm really sad that it bombed so bad at the box office. Y'all should have gone out and supported it more. Go watch it on Disney Plus because it's genuinely so good and so heartwarming. It's fantastic. I also saw Violent Night, uh, Right at Christmas, which is a Christmas movie. Think Die Hard, but with Santa killing bad guys. And it's David Harbour as Santa, which could not have been more perfectly cast. It was super fun. My friends and I watched it in cinemas. We got together as a group and had the best time. I loved it. It was super fun. On Netflix, I watched Do Revenge. Emma and Scarlett made me watch it and then I regret not having watched it sooner because it's so damn good. Can we talk about this for a second? Like I said, I'm a sucker for mysteries. That one had twist after twist after twist and you just don't know what's coming and Holy crap, Camila Mendez and Maya Hawk had insane on-screen chemistry. It's fantastic. It's an incredible movie. Go watch it. Avatar The Way of Water, super enjoyed it. I saw it twice in 3D. At first, when I heard an Avatar sequel was coming, I was like, eh, but why though? I actually genuinely enjoyed this way more than I ever thought I would. It's a fantastic film. Watching it the whole way through, I was like, this could have been an incredible video game, but I'm really glad it exists in a film medium. It's, yeah, I love it. It's fantastic. Now my top three films. Number three. Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. I was a major fan of the first film ever since it came out. I saw it in cinemas back in 2019, right before COVID happened. Anyway, like I said, murder mystery buff number numero uno right here. Um, and I absolutely love the first movie. The ensemble cast, Daniel Craig playing the hell out of Benoit Blanc, loved it. I was not sure how Glass Onion was gonna go, especially being done by Netflix now. I saw it in cinemas. I don't know how they managed to outdo themselves, but they did. Glass Onion is an incredible sequel to Knives Out. The entire cast did so well, Daniel Craig especially, and Janelle Monet, absolute icon, love them. I absolutely love Glass Onion. I watched it so many times after it came out on Netflix. If you haven't seen it yet, what are you doing? Go watch it, don't spoil yourself, it's fantastic. I loved it. Now, number two was The Batman. I didn't think anything could pass the Dark Knight as my favorite Batman on film. This one beat it for me. Robert Pattinson did so, so well. He captured both Bruce Wayne and Batman in a way that I haven't really seen on screen before, which is really cool. I like seeing different actors' interpretations of this character. It was gripping, it was action-packed, it was dark, it was gritty, I loved it. I can't recommend it enough. It is on Netflix now in Australia, so go watch it. And my number one movie of the year, Everything Everywhere All at Once. I don't know what I can say about this movie without spoiling it, but it is nothing short of incredible. If you haven't seen it yet, you're missing out on an absolute behemoth of a film to behold. It's fantastic. Yeah, I can't say good enough things about it. Everything Everywhere All at Once, movie of the year for me. It was fantastic. Okay, now we're moving on to music. Now I'm gonna start with my top five EPs of the year. I was debating, in my 2020 favorites, I like talked a bit about each album, and in my 2021 favorites, I didn't talk about them, and I kinda wanna do, so I'm limiting myself to one sentence summaries of each one. My top five EPs of 2022. Number five. Blind Beat by Drax Project. A challenge where they have to come up with a beat and lyrics and stuff separately makes for some surprisingly cohesive jams. Loved it. Number four, How Can I Pretend by Wager Project. Beautiful lo-fi bedroom music that is just beautiful and gentle and amazing. Number three, Cacophony by Clear Eyes and Rio Cragen. Experimental beats mixed with amazing vocals and rapping flow love. Number two, Comfort Noise by Umru. Incredible PC pop that came completely out of left field for me. Loved it. And number one, Noted by NOTD. EDM done in a way I haven't really heard before and I really, really enjoyed it. Now let's move on to albums. Number 20, Surrender by Maggie Rogers. Number 19, In Loving Memory by Black Bear. Number 18, Hold the Girl by Rina Sawayama. Number 17, Five Sauce Five by Five Seconds of Summer. Number 16, Crash by Charlie XCX. Number 15, Big by Betty Who. Number 14, Coping Mechanism by Willow. Number 13, Aftershock by Alexander23. Number 12, I Used to Think I Could Fly by Tate McRae. Number 11, Emails I Can't Send by Sabrina Carpenter. Number 10, Familia by Camila Cabello. Number 9, Dawn FM by The Weeknd. Number 8, 
Demon Time by Miramasa. Number seven, So Far So Good by The Chainsmokers. Number six, Dreaming of Flying by Clear Eyes. Number five, Sucker Punch by Maggie Linderman. Number four, Super Ache by Conan Gray. Number three, Holy Fuck by Demi Lovato. Number two, Palaces by Flu. And my number one album of 2022, you guessed it, Midnights by Taylor Swift. Now before we go into songs, I actually wanted to give a quick few honorable mentions on albums and EPs. So there's a couple of albums that didn't make the top 20 that I actually did really like regardless. So um, I want to give honorable mentions to MK3.5 Die Cut Slash City Planning by Mount Kimby. Why Can't We Just Pretend by Marion Hill. Smithereens by Joji. Dirt Femme by Tuvalu. Give Me the Future by Bastille. The Loneliest Time by Carly Rae Jepsen. Charlie by Charlie Puth. Night Call by Years and Years. 12 Carat Toothache by Post Malone. Told ya by John Harvey. Love Sucks by Avril Lavigne. Mainstream Sellout by Machine Gun Kelly. Space Island by Broods. How to Let Go by Sigrid. Special by Lizzo. Tell Me That It's Over by Wallows. And this one's gonna get me in trouble. Renaissance by Beyonce. The reason it didn't make it into my top 20, not my favorite release of the year. Don't get me wrong, I love the disco sound the Queen has taken on, but it just isn't entirely my vibe, this album. And it just sort of released at a time where like, I don't know if that's the album that I needed to hear at that time. So it just sort of sat in a weird place for me for the rest of the year. It's good, don't get me wrong. Virgo's Groove deserves more recognition. All right, now to my top 100 songs of the year. Here is number 100 through to 21, now. And that's that. So now, I present to you my top 20 songs of 2022. Number 20, She's All I Wanna Be by Tate McRae. Number 19, Escape by Flume and Quiet Bison featuring Kushka. Number 18, Talking to Yourself by Carly Rae Jepsen. Number 17, Uh Oh by Tate McRae. Number 16, Self Sabotage by Maggie Linderman. Number 15, Forever For Me by Demi Lovato. Number 14, Up To Me by Clear Eyes and Royzen Marie. Number 13, Everything But You by Clean Bandit featuring A7S. Number 12, Beg For You by Charlie XCX featuring Rina Sawayama. And number 11, If We Were A Party by Alexander23. Number 10, No One Dies From Love by Tuvalu. Number nine, Disaster by Conan Gray. Number eight, Ripple by Psycho featuring Flume and Chrome Sparks. Number seven, Glimpse Of Us by Joji. Number six, TV by Billie Eilish. Number five, Memories by Conan Gray. Number four, Highest Building, Flume and Oaklow. Number three, Antihero by Taylor Swift. Number two, Something About Your Love by S.G. Lewis. And my number one song of the year is Sirens by Flume featuring Caroline Polachek. So that's music. Now, before we go, I want to talk about some of my most anticipated things for the year to come. So first of all is The Last of Us series on HBO, which as of me recording this, the first episode is already out as of yesterday, and I watched it the second it came out, and I am so unbelievably happy with it. As a massive fan of the original game, I can't get over how faithful they stayed while still managing to make it feel fresh and new, and how gripping it is, even for people who already know the story, like, by the back of our hands. That whole first prologue section with Joel and Sarah had me on the edge of my seat the entire time like heart racing and thumping. It's so well done. They recreated the world so beautifully and so vividly, and I cannot wait to watch more. It's gonna be my Monday night tradition from now on. We also will be getting Spider-Man 2 this year. I'm unsure if I'm gonna do a playthrough for that or if I wanna experience it on my own for the first time, but I will keep you guys posted on that. And I'm so excited. Also, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse comes out later this year. I'm so pumped. I love Into the Spider-Verse so much, and every trailer I've seen for this looks incredible. I'm so pumped. Also, the Barbie movie. Holy crap, I never thought I'd be excited for this movie, but here we are. Opening night, that's me, right there. And lastly, Heartstopper Season 2 comes out this year. We don't have a release date, but I am there watching it the second it's out, and we'll probably watch it another 26 times after that. So that's all my favorite things for 2022. Now there's a bunch of other stuff that happened in my life in 2022 that wasn't anything to do with music, games, movies, TV. I did like five different shows this year. I was in We Will Rock You at the beginning of the year. I got to be one of the future dancers in the ensemble, which is amazing. 
I did Spiegel-esque, uh, Wayne and Katie's cabaret show right in the middle of that. I choreographed School of Rock, which is my first time choreographing a show on the Empire main stage, which has been a dream of mine since I was 12. That dream actually came true for me this year. I ticked something off my bucket list. I'm so honored. It's... It was so much fun. I also choreographed Year in Town and our show with Crescendo this year, which was super fun. And at the very end of 2022, going into 2023, I've choreographed uh, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee down in Brisbane. Um, and it's my first Brisbane show that I'm choreographing and I'm having a ton of fun so far. This cast is incredible. My creatives are amazing. I'm having a blast. The show opens in just under a month and I'm really excited. And then later on this year, I will also be starting rehearsals for Boy From Oz, which I'm dancing in. And I'll also be choreographing Heathers, which is a dream show of mine to choreograph. And I'm so, so, so excited. We have auditions this weekend actually. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. I also discovered new musicals this year. I got introduced to Hades Town and Ride the Cyclone from Emma. I got to see Six right at the beginning of 2023. I got to see Billie Eilish live for the first time, Conan Gray, Flume. It's been a fun year. It's been a hectic and stressful and busy and just non-stop year, but it's also been one of the most rewarding. Like I've discovered things I've never been able to do before. And I actually really started looking after myself. I continued my skincare routine. I got a new psychologist. I'm on anti-anxiety medication, which is working a charm now. I have amazing friends, amazing family. I'm just very grateful for the year that's been, and I'm super excited for the year that's to come. So I just want to say thank you to everyone, and I want to thank you guys for watching and sticking around. Sorry this video is rushed. Sorry it's late, but I hope that you guys stick around for more to come. There will be more to come, I promise you. So for now, I'm gonna leave you guys with some bloopers from the previous year. There's not much this year, as I didn't film too much, but there'll be more to come, I promise. I love you guys, as always, stay fabulous, and I'll see you guys when I see you next. Bye, everybody. You who? You cold foot peers. Hello, friends, it do be I. I'll jump up and be like, hello, we are making bubble tea with my best friend Emma, and then you'll pop up and be like, hi. What? <laughs> Sorry, I was concentrating very much on my okay. cardio with oranges on it. Oh, am I just following your lead? Yes. Dad's continuing watching Harry Potter. My whole family's gotten into Harry Potter and I still haven't watched any of them, so I'm like, what is happening? Um, I still have to watch Hawkeye. <laughs> I just watched Spider-Man No Way Home last night for like the third time, so. Um, okay, go off orchestra, I guess. Emma's also here, I love her. Hi. Um, oh, good. <laughs> There's condoms I could buy. What use am I gonna have for those when no one wants to f <laughs> I hate myself. Jackson, brain, shut up. I've never had a single chili flake. Should I eat one? Go for it. A single one? A single chili flake. See how it works? This is really happening. This is really happening. There's a single, single chili flake. Oh. You okay? Oh. Bad? What? How do people do? Uh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm not a fan. What do I do? <laughs> what do I do? It's just in my mouth. <laughs> um, <probably don't. laughs> we just started the video. Help me. I'm cutting that out of the video. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jackson. We'll do it like, we'll do it like the 10 minute power hour. Game Grumps, 10 minute power. Oh, I, I got this. Okay. That's my good side, so you need to. This is my good side too! Oh, come on, Fortune. Because otherwise, guess. this side covers my head. I'm the guest. We're so domestic. My friend Emma is also here. Hello! <laughs> 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 but at the same time. That was me! Okay. <laughs> Should I put this in the oven? Yeah, maybe don't do that. Shadow is sniffing the camera right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's <sees. laughs> <laughs> He's like, I want to be in the video. That's Shadow, cat everybody, the king that he is. He's my baby boy. Well, he's not really. You've baby. seen him in a couple videos before. Yes. He's yeah. big now. He's a big motherfucker. You'll be doing a lot of big things for me. I do. Oh, <laughs> That's alright. Shadow. <laughs> you just see his Shadow. Apple. Right, like, come here. Come here. Good boy. Oh, big stretch. Big stretch. Oh, yeah. There's the photo tail. <laughs> Do you want to at least pretend? Oh no, it's stuck! Oh, Jackson, you're so good. Oh, you're so strong and manly. Thank Mary, you. Please. I'm so strong and manly. <laughs>
<laughs> this video's gonna it's be full like crackhead energy and I'm here for um, it. Yes. Mr. Vice President. Mr. Mr. Madison. Madison. Senator Burr. Ha! You don't even know what, what you're asking me to confess. confess. You have nothing. I don't have to tell you anything at all. Unless. Unless. If I can prove that I never broke the law, do you promise not to tell another soul what you saw? No one else is in the room where it happened. Is that a yes? Um, uh, yes. I don't fucking know, yeah. <laughs> Me on my what did you do, Larry? What the fuck did you do, Larry? You're a dumb, Larry. Larry. See, I can belt when I feel comfy. <laughs> when I feel comfy. Which I don't usually. That's my <laughs> <laughs> Give me the thumbnail. Oh, that was just like, that bubbled me. There's so many outtakes from this. Always have been. Bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs. That one's yours because it's got hard eggs. Oh, yes. Oh, we should get some. I'm gonna go grab some cupcake. Oh, there is sauce out there. Sauce. 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 Do you want